Hello and welcome to Super Retroville. In this video we're going to talk about adjusting the tappets on a typical side valve engine. This is my 1931 standard big nine and it's starting to sound a little bit rattly so it's probably high time that we check the adjustments. The tappets are located behind this cover here in the tappet chest so I'm going to remove the distributor cap to make access a bit easier. I'm also going to take out the sparking plugs so that I can turn the engine over on the handle more easily to make the adjustments. As you see on this car, access isn't too bad. On later cars with higher wings it's a bit more tricky and also on cars with larger manifolds that come out um, you can often have to take the manifold off to gain access. At this point it's probably worth actually mentioning what a side valve engine is. It's an engine where the valves are at the side of the cylinder bores like that rather than being in the head of the engine. It has the advantage that it's very simple, it's got fewer moving parts and the cylinder head is essentially just a lid that goes on with a combustion chamber in it. Um, a lot of mid-30s cars were built like this. So what we can see are the valves here open and here are the, these are the exhaust ports actually. So this port will be connected to these two valves, this port is connected to that valve and the, the inlet uh, valves are in this case um, connected to a port on the other side of the block. So these valves are pushed up and down by a camshaft which is hidden below this plate here and what we're doing when we're adjusting the tappets is we're making sure that when these valves are closed like these ones are there is a tiny gap between the head of the tappet and the bottom of the valve to ensure that it seats down firmly into the, the valve seating and, and makes a gas tight seal. So looking in the tappet chest here, what we can see is the valve coming down inside the valve spring that's holding it closed, and then we have the cam follower with the tappet nut on the top of it. And what we're trying to do is make sure that the clearance between, see that moving there, between the top of the tappet nut and the bottom of the valve stem is just enough so that the valve always closes properly when the engine is running. Um, so that's what we're going to be talking about adjusting in the rest of the video, getting that clearance right. Obviously this is, this is far too much, this engine hasn't been adjusted properly yet. There are the tappets down in the side of the block. So what you want to do to adjust the tappet is turn the crank until the valve you're interested in is fully open. In other words, the cam is at the top like that. And then you want to turn the engine in a complete revolution. And because the gearing, which is two revolutions of the crank to one revolution of the camshaft, if you turn it one complete revolution, you will end up with the crank, with the uh, cam at the bottom of its travel like that. So instead of checking the clearances in the more orthodox way by checking between the tappet and the valve stem, I'm going to check them between the cam follower and the cam down at the bottom there. Um, so I know that these should be four thousandths of an inch and I've got my feeler gauge here which is a six thousandths one so if I can get this in there I know that the clearance is too wide so you can just push it in like that there we are, see that's gone in quite easily so I know that that, that tappet is, um, is set too loose so um, the other thing you notice with these cars is that they sort of make a rattling sound that comes and goes so if you turn this round 90 degrees and try again you might find it's tight and it isn't so uh, I'm pretty sure that this this tap is too loose oh there we are see look at that that's I oh, know that is that is going in but it is tighter 
it is tighter at that uh, in that position. So it's a funny old business with these old cars. They're not uh, not really particularly precision pieces of equipment, or well, not compared to modern modern cars anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work my way along, and I'm going to try and estimate what all the gaps are, and then work out which ones I need to reset, because um, it's it's a real fiddle just to methodically go through them all. You may as well only do the ones which are which are bad. This is what I've found, is that the starting at the back, which standard call number one, that was at six to seven thou, then six thou, four thou, six to seven, six thou, four, four, then six to seven. So probably the clattery ones are going to be the six to seven ones. My preferred method of doing it is to start off with a feeler gauge in here and then get the adjustment roughly right and then revert to fine adjustment using the, the method of, of pushing the feeler gauge between the, the cam and the, the cam follower like, like I showed you before. Um, you can't do the adjustment with the feeler gauge down here even though it's far simpler to get it in because as you will see the spanners get in the way. Well in my infinite wisdom I've decided to actually make a tool to do this rather than walk down to my other garage to pick up the tool that I made a while ago which is now getting a bit worn out. So we're going to make a tool, a special spanner out of this rusty old bit of lawnmower handle um, and what we want is to make it so that it is the same width as that there. So that's and that's done, my little tool for helping with the tappet adjustment. Um, didn't take me too long to make, would have taken me even less time to make if I'd actually bothered to do it carefully and not had to do it twice. Um, but there you are. So that will now hold the, the cam follower steady, allowing me to adjust the nuts without that turning. So the first thing you want to do is turn this round so that the flats are pointing like that and then you can take your tool for holding the uh, holding the tappet still that one we've just made put it in like that so that then locks the the tappet in position so that that can't rotate um, and then you need to get two more spanners you need to get one spanner on the lock nut like that. So that's you see that's going on the lock nut at the bottom. So you want to hold the hold the tappet still and undo the lock nut. And then the tappet itself has a smaller nut. In fact on this engine <laughs> They're all different sizes. Well, this is a smaller size than that. Usually, I think they're um, on the standard there, uh, zero BA. That's the size of the, the tappet for some bizarre reason. Um, so then you put that spanner on the tappet. So you've got the that holding the cam follower still, that on the lock nut, that on the tappet. So you loosen the lock nut, adjust the tappet up or down according to whether you want to increase or decrease the clearance and then hold these two still and do the lock nut up and what you'll find is because of the torrenting on the thread and everything as you do it up the, the tappet will get pulled up and you'll get slightly less clearance than you thought you were going to get so it's a bit strange you have to sort of make the clearance a little bit more than you think it's going to be and then tighten it up and measure it again and it's <laughs> frankly it's um it's very time consuming and it's not not particularly easy so here you are you can imagine now we're trying to get the feeler gauge in between the top of the tappet and the so it is actually in there believe it or not so you can see it's it's a bit of a palaver I've tied this piece of string on here because 
in the process it's quite likely that this span will fall off and you really don't want it dropping down into the engine so anything you think that might drop into the engine tie a bit of string around it and so once you've finished all this adjustment then you can go back and measure the clearance there and then just tweak it a little bit at a time until you've got it how you want it. I've managed to get it where the four feeler gauge will go in so that will that will slide in fairly freely actually but the six there's the six the six won't go so it's somewhere between four and six which which I'm happy about if you're using this video as a reference for a standard Big Nine or a Tinmouth or something like that, you might be surprised that my engine doesn't have these covers, which essentially prevent you from getting access to the sort of clearance between the cam followers and the cam. I don't know why mine doesn't have these fitted. Perhaps they were thrown away at some time in the past. So if you do have these these fitted or you can't get to the cam and the cam follower, you're going to have to do your adjustment by getting your feeler gauge in between the bottom of the valve stem and the top of the tappet nut. Um, so yes, good luck with that. Here's an example of how the tappets wear. You can see that the valve stem has gradually created a sort of dimple in the top of that, which means that when you put your feeler gauge in the gap, you're not going to get a true reading because effectively it's bridging that dimple. Um, and that's why I think if you can measure between the cam and the cam follower you get a more accurate measurement. The only thing you can really do with that, about this is to replace the tappet screws and for standards in particular they're not available anymore so what you can do is you can grind them down till they're flat again and then re-case harden them. Now I've never tried doing that uh, might be a good thing to try in another video actually I've not done any case hardening so yeah let's get back to the adjustment see that amount of movement there that almost certainly will will rattle in this engine in my experience four thousandths of an inch is is sort of just perceptible so that that is very easily perceptible and it is much more than four thousandths of an inch. Okay so I think I've got this uh, <laughs> camera steady so that you can see it so this is the thing that's holding the cam follower sorry I called it the tappet in the previous clip but that's holding the cam follower this is um, on the tappet itself and this is on the lock nut. So what you need to do is hold these two stationary against this motion, undo the lock nut. It's not easy. Of course that's tight. Whoops. Okay, lock nut's undone. Now see the changing position of the spanners. So then holding these two steady I know that I want to decrease the tappet clearance so what I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew the tappet slightly um, and just from experience I think I'm probably going to have to do it about that much so when you've done that, you then need to hold these two stationary again and do the do the lock nut up. Now you see it's <laughs> a bit of a bit of a palaver there. So holding those two in their relative positions, I'll do the lock nut up like that. You can take the spanners out. And that's what that looks like now. So if you compare that with what it looked like before. 
so that's I would say probably five thousandths of clearance. And the moment of truth is here. Is it going to be noisy? Let's find out. <laughs> 